Okay, so I decided to do a video about black and white sketching, which is also known as Grisail or Grisal, or uh, it's French, so uh, who knows. I'm not trying to start a, a video channel or anything like that. I just want to do this one video about the black and white sketch, and then uh, probably another one about color sketching. I want to do these videos because while starting the sketching process seems super common for Spanish painters, Americans for some reason don't seem to do it that much. Um, and I actually learned this process from a Spanish painter, uh, Alfonso Giraldez. So the picture on the left is the sketch from where I get to at the end of the video, and the one on the right for comparison is the totally final piece. An advantage to starting with a sketch process is that you can quickly search for and find a roughed-in version of what you want your final result to be, rather than a meticulous and time-consuming technical process. Um, and using this process has actually sped up my painting probably five to tenfold. If I take the saturation out of my final result, you can see how the black and white sketch was really the foundation, and that, that foundation was actually sketched within the first hour or two of painting. For this process, you want to start with an opaque and viscous paint. I chose Schmincke White and Camara Black here. So the mentality when we start here is that we're taking an object that isn't lit and then adding uh, a rendering of uh, most importantly light and secondarily texture and material uh, with the application of paint. I sped everything up because I think painting videos are generally boring, so I wanted to keep this one as fast and tight as I possibly could. So I started attacking the miniature with big brush strokes. I'm not even thinking about the smaller micro volumes at first. To kind of demonstrate, here's me messing around in a 3D application. Uh, the head is just kind of a sphere, the neck I'm thinking of as a cylinder, the armor is the series of large plates, kind of like the sides of a cube. Um, and that's not to say that my brush strokes are ignoring the smaller details. Um, like the eyes and the mouth, but I'm definitely not trying to define them at this point. And so another thing that's important here is the direction of the brush strokes. Uh, for the hair, I'm keeping the brush strokes in the direction of the hair itself. And for the armor, I'm kind of thinking of it as uh, milled steel, which has like a set grain direction. So I'm keeping my brush strokes uh, in a kind of U shape across both plates. Uh, the skin or at least skin that isn't super creased doesn't have directionality to it, so I'm keeping those brush strokes more directionless. And it's worth noting that like visible brush strokes are basically a way to, to imply tertiary detail that doesn't actually exist as part of the sculpt. The way I'm working is basically just adding wet blends on top of wet blends. That's basically just one technique. I'm not working in a set pattern at all, I'm just refining areas as I see them, as I notice them. And I'm definitely trying to spend the majority of my time on the face. The face is ultimately the thing that's going to sell the miniature, it's where everyone's looking, and nobody's going to care if the back of the head isn't super well defined. Um, I'm fine to keep the non-face areas way less developed, way more blocked in, as long as they aren't so underdeveloped that they look off or wrong compared to the face. And even the specifics of the wet blending process here isn't super technical. I'm basically just dabbing on paint with directionality to my brush strokes and then blending them in with adjacent areas. It's also worth talking about how much of a concept of the end result you have when you start the sketch. Sometimes when I start, I know exactly what I want the end result to be, or sometimes I find the idea as I'm sketching. The sketching process is valid regardless. This is my second time painting this particular bust, and in my first version, I had cast it in a side light, which by the end of the sketch, I decided was actually not a good direction of the light for the sculpt, which is pretty ironic because I sculpted this bus as well, so you'd think I would know how to light it. But that first version just didn't work out well. So with this version, I wanted to totally reset and just do a basic zenithly lit sketch to kind of re-familiarize myself with the volumes of the bust as they exist in the real world, which can be different from how you experience them while you're 3D sculpting, which also ironically is on a 2D screen. You should also develop an idea of who the character is and what kind of environment they're in. For this version of the bus, I didn't necessarily start with a preconceived idea, but by the time I got to the end of the black and white sketch, I decided that she's definitely in a daytime exterior, she's being lit by the sun through clouds, through an open forest canopy, and she's looking with disdain at something happening downstream from her. At this point, the end of the black and white sketch, I don't exactly know what it is, but I want it to be represented by some kind of more nuanced complex reflections in her armor, which I've blocked in at this point. I don't have a ton of experience painting on camera, and I quickly found that eyes are almost impossible to paint well, uh, since your eye and the camera basically need to be the exact same place. So instead, uh, I have this screen recording of my philosophy on eyes. So basically your level one eyes are just the black 
line outline of the eye, which is fundamentally important for the contrast, plus a black circle for the iris, plus a specular reflection in the direction of the light source. Level 2 adds an actual iris, which should be possible on any miniature above 28 millimeters, and even a lot of 28 millimeter miniatures with large eyes, like Games Workshop, you can you have room to put an iris in there. Level 3 adds some redness in the corners of the eye, as well as texture to the iris. Uh, this should be possible on any miniature around 75 millimeters or larger, and certainly any bust. There's enough room to cram all that in there. And then if you have room and you want to take up another level, let's call it 3 plus, and you can also try adding a little white dot next to the iris, because there's actually a break in volume between the white of the eye and where the iris kind of uh, extrudes from it. So uh, a little reflection there happens naturally. And also you can try adding little white dots in the corners of the eye. And all of this can kind of be evaluated based off looking uh, reference photos of eyes. I'm also spending a lot of time talking about the eyes because it's definitely the most important part of the miniature and therefore of the sketch. <laughs> so back to the bus. As you're sketching, you're losing contrast between the different breaks in volume. So then you have to kind of go back in, and if it's a hard break in volume, I'll put the contrast in with black lining. Um, and that's kind of necessary between those hard breaks and surfaces to regain contrast. And it's going to be a constant push-pull of losing and then regaining that contrast. I posted an earlier non-narrated video. I got several comments about how apparently I hold the brush, brush weird. All I can say is that it's the same way I hold a pen. Uh, it's super comfortable for me because the brush just sits naturally in my hand uh, and the wrist controls the motion of the brush. That's just me though, but maybe if your fingers start to cramp, you could try holding it the way I hold it. So towards the end here, I cut big chunks out of the video and really sped up what was left because um, as it progresses, it's just really a lot of the same thing, uh, putting down wet blends in smaller and smaller areas and making the refinement uh, tighter and tighter. So that leads to uh, another important question, which is how to decide when the black and white sketch is done. And for me, the sketch is done when uh, it's a good representation of how I want the black and white values distributed in the final piece. And I don't necessarily care how well blended they are, but they should be in generally the right place and feel well balanced. Well, cool. Thank you for watching. Uh, like I said, I want to do another one of these uh, for my next step in this process, which is a color sketch. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to get to that, but, you know, stay tuned.